So we know that Ian Cameron had actually been appointed as the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Police within the Parliament of South Africa. This video actually captures a snippet of his vision in how he wants to cleanse the South African police service and actually come for those corrupt police officers who actually escaped the grip of the former police minister, Becky Sele. Let's listen to how he describes his overall vision for the police of South Africa and I'll be back for some really interesting, shocking analysis on what he exposed about the corruption going on in the Philippine Police Training Academy in a scandal that was largely overlooked by the former Minister of Police, Becky Sele. So all the parties uh, uh, were in favour? Yes, yes. Uh, of course, I mean, NK and, and EFF uh, uh, did... Did uh, that pushed me a little bit during the the sitting, uh, but it was it was still positive and it was constructive from all parties. Uh, it was very interesting to see the dynamic, and I've heard about it before, but it was really good to see the the changing dynamics once you step into a committee. It's almost as though a lot of the politicking disappears and it becomes an issue of community safety, an issue of policing, an issue of accountability. Um, and, uh, and there was not one entity uh, or party or person in that uh, sitting yesterday that didn't ask valid and important questions and that didn't mention valid and important points. Uh, and the, the contribution from the police and the other entities that were there um, were 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 quite good. I mean, they did their presentations and so on. But it was it was fantastic to see how a portfolio committee can actually work and can actually hold people accountable. Because I think it is something that that kind of got a little bit lost. Um, and it's not. Uh, I don't say it as criticism, but it is something that a lot of South Africans lost interest in portfolio committees because I think they they kind of felt it was just a presentation mechanism, whereas it's actually an oversight and uh, accountability mechanism. Um, and and with something like police, I mean, the 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 immense responsibility that we have and and power in the in a positive sense that we have to really ask critical questions and to hold the relevant people accountable is is spectacular and it's something that we need to take very very seriously what as chairperson will be your priorities so resource allocation is crucial for me obviously um uh, the budget needs to be passed now we are at a point where it's very difficult to really make uh, amendments and, and obviously it's from a previous executive and um uh, but We've, we're already indicating in our reports that will be released to the committee tomorrow. I think it will be public soon as well. Um, uh, we, we actually just completed, or I just completed the, the draft now um, uh, from yesterday's committee. And we've already indicated that in the near future, um, we would need to consider amending the budget in order to make sure that the police have the right resource allocation in the right places. Uh, some things that came up was the um, the 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 consistent appointment or the constant rather appointment of of senior officers where they are not necessarily needed. We've got an extremely bloated management of the South African Police Service, and I'm not convinced that it is a priority. And we could rather use that money to support members on the ground. Um, so that's one one very simple example. Um, uh, is, is resource allocation and so too for IPID. Uh, then a, a core responsibility is to question uh, specific cases um, that I see as, as important that I think have a national influence or impact. So something that has the danger or the risk of causing some kind of a negative trend nationally. So for example, uh, a question that we're already asking is, when are the arrests happening for the Philippi Training College corruption? 114 million rand that is unaccounted for, and the same commander is still commanding the college. Um, how is that possible? How is it possible that that, that very commander tells police members that um, he will nothing will happen to him, and, and if it does, he will um, he will bring more down with him? You know, it, it is simply unacceptable. So those types of cases all play. Uh, a significant role in, in causing a risk of having this negative trend throughout the police because if it's happening at Philippi, 
the chances are it's likely happening at other police uh, academies as well. So, so, so those are, are some of them. And then the the third one um, that I believe is is really being a, a an oversight voice for South Africans on the ground. Um, we need to restore the respect of for Parliament and for a committee like the Police Portfolio Committee because um, it's got an immense responsibility and it is something that needs to be used. It needs to be used. It's constitutionally mandated to do what we are doing and therefore we need to actually use it. If I go to a police station and I ask them uh, uh, to see their occurrence book um, uh, as oversight, they are not allowed to say no. It is my constitutional mandate to do that. They they can't stop me from doing that, and that's a very silly example. But it is a it's a simple way of doing it. And Brilliant. What do you guys think? I think uh, the guy has a, a vision and you know a plan. I've seen a lot of your comments. Many of you complained a lot about the South Africa Police Service and how a lot um, you know needs to be done. We all know that South Africa actually has almost eighty two murders a day. Uh, Neil De Bay actually argues that this is kind of like liking to be a war. South Africa is not in a war, but then how come South Africa has as much as high as eighty two murders in a day? With um, most of the world actually referring to South Africa as a murder capital of the world, taking over from Naib Bukele's El Salvador, where he claims that El Salvador now has become the safest country in the Western Hemisphere. But South Africa is actually still holding up the torch. And could Ian Cameron actually work closely with Sensum Chunu to really cleanse the South African police service of the mafia, according to Gator McKenzie, who he claims is responsible for most of the crimes that are actually going on in South Africa. But anyway, I also want us to watch the actual video where Ian Cameron exposes the Philippine Police Training Academy, exposing so much shocking, shocking, shocking truths about what's going on in the police service in South Africa under the leadership of former Minister of Police, Becky Selly. We're all relatively concerned about the quality of new recruits that the South African Police Service is training. And I want to share some information with you of the Philippi Training Academy in the Western Cape. And I want to start with saying that this is the same academy that within the last 12 months there was a major investigation, not only because many recruits, actually over 300 recruits, had bought their way into the college, but also because certain recruits were literally dealing with drugs inside the college. Some of them were even linked to notorious gangs outside the college and in different parts of the Cape Flats. Despite that, they were allowed to come back into the college and luckily due to public pressure, we managed to get them out. But I want to tell you what the status quo at the Philippi Trading Academy is. And I want to start with the management. Now, in the top five of the South African Police Service Training Academy in Philippi, the top five management members, only one out of five is actually a SAPS member. And I want to read this to you. So first one that I want to talk about is the support services manager, who is an ex-chef, or so I'm told, no policing experience whatsoever. And this person is now in charge of human resource management at the academy, supply chain and finances. Again, no police experience. The next one is the training manager. A training manager in the South African Police Service Academy with zero police experience. Where is the logic in that? It makes no sense whatsoever. This person is an ex-teacher and is responsible for all training, and I emphasize, with zero police experience. The next one is the learner affairs manager. Also, zero police experience, responsible for the well-being of students. But despite certain students literally co uh, contemplating suicide over the last few years, this was simply swept under the rug. Then we have got the monitoring and evaluation manager, also no policing experience, also an ex-teacher. And this person is responsible for quality assurance. Now, how do you assure the quality of a police training academy if you do not understand policing, if you were not a cop yourself? It just makes no sense whatsoever. There's no logical explanation for this. Now, on top of this, and I'll share the photos above here, you'll see now that it has been found that the catering equipment of the Philippi Training College has been rented out. It literally gets rented out for private functions and it seems that members then take money for themselves after renting out this equipment, as you can see. 
The other problem is that in terms of the mess services or the mess hall services, food is ordered and is often taken home. In fact, it was in the papers, I'll attach the article too, how members or command members at the college literally eat like kings. You can imagine if you're a senior police member with a relatively good salary and you're getting three meals per day, you're running an extra side business with something like a catering service that you're using police or let's rather say tax property, taxpayers property to rent out for private functions then you're doing pretty well because they cover your accommodation too. It's pretty much a free-for-all at the Philippi Training College. I want to take it a little bit further. In the, in the passing out parade in 2023 in December, they spent just over 300,000 rand for buses to take people to the parade for Minister Becky Kele. And then yeah, some, some, some pretty bad information too. We all hear all the lip service about violence against women and children, but at this very Philippi Training College, female trainees were literally made to sleep in the cold without blankets after they had complained about sexual harassment by detached service members that attended training or came to present training at the academy. Later on, they were literally made to roll in sewerage outside uh, and uh, despite that being leaked to the media and exposed, there was still no action taken against the management of the Philippi Training College. It just astounds me that so much can happen in this one space and everyone knows about it. It's been written about. The South African Police Service Management certainly do know about it, yet they do nothing. Now, despite the budget cuts in SAPs, cops not having uh, ammunition, paper, pens to write on, sometimes vehicles to use, the Philippi Training College management, and specifically the commander, literally recently spent 46,000 Rand on buying himself a new desk. It's 46,000 Rand and another 30,000 Rand on cupboards for his office. So that's 76,000 Rand that could rather have been spent on supporting cops on the ground or improving training. Need I go on? I'll share more soon, but I think this gives you a good indication of the disarray of training, of the training function in the South African Police Service. Thank goodness for solidarity that exposed the horrible circumstances that police have to work in at the, at the building in Pretoria, at the head office, and that they had to be evacuated. But when is this going to stop? And I think we need to expose more of this, and I will share more soon. Yeah, so what do you think? I think it's quite unfortunate. I really don't have much to say here in this video. I think it's just quite unfortunate how how much, you know, um, you know, we we actually now know about South Africa's police and what probably might have crippled is effectiveness in trying to stop the whole violent crime and uh, root causes of all of that crime and trying to keep South Africa safe. We see most of this in in-house corrupt activities going on in the South African police and little wonder why the country might actually be termed the mother country capital of the world. It appears that according to Ian Cameron, uh, many things have actually gone wrong, many things have been overlooked and uh, there is a need now for a lot of work in cleansing the South African police force and really erasing most corrupt police officers. But anyway, what do you guys think about this video? Share your thoughts in the comments.